What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my physics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about physical measurements, scalars versus vectors, distance versus displacement, speed versus velocity. We talked about acceleration, work, torque, kinematics, thermodynamics. We talked about the gravitational forces and projectiles. We talked about mass versus weight. We talked about inclined planes linear motion versus circular motion we talked about mechanical equilibrium mechanical advantage translational equilibrium versus rotational equilibrium today we shall talk about electricity not the static electricity but the flowing electricity it flows and flows and flows like a current and just like the water current flows from high to low from high pressure to low pressure, creating a potential difference between the two points, the electric current is similar. It passes from point A to point B who have potential difference. The electrical potential difference is measured in volts. The magnitude or the intensity of the electric current is measured in amperes and the resistance is measured in ohms. Let's talk about devices. Electric potential difference is measured by voltmeter. The magnitude of the electric current is measured by the ammeter and the resistance is measured by ohmmeter. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my physics playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Not to be confused with mechanical retention. Shout out to the dentists. Here are the most fundamental of equations. The magnitude of the electric current equals the amount of charges divided by time. So 1 ampere equals 1 coulomb per second. If you do cross multiplication, you can say that Q equals IT, which is important. And this is the first equation. The second equation is the electric potential difference equals energy divided by the quantity of charges. So we say that one volt equals one joule per coulomb. Give me that nice cross multiplication and you say that energy equals voltage times the charges. And this was the second equation. The third most fundamental equation is Ohm's law. It says that resistance equals the electric potential difference or voltage divided by the magnitude of the electric current or the intensity, hence the I, of the electric current. So we say that one ohm equals one volt per ampere. Give me that nice cross multiplication and you find this famous Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. So Q equals IT, E equals VQ, and V equals IR. Here's a nasty mnemonic that I use to remember all of this. Imagine that you were standing up waiting in a queue in order to apply for a job at an IT company. Then you got desperate and did something stupid. You started smoking e-cigarettes, which caused VQ mismatch in your lungs. You can learn about this topic in my physiology playlist. After smoking your lungs out, you became disabled and you needed physical therapy using some infrared light. Here are the three equations again. One ampere equals one coulomb per second. One volt equals one joule per coulomb. And one ohm equals one volt per ampere. Get a piece of paper, write everything down. Otherwise, you're not going to remember the equation on your exam. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. When we talked about fluids, we talked about fluids at rest, statics, and fluids in motion, called dynamics. This is Archimedes winking at you after he discovered buoyancy. Same thing for electricity. We can study electricity at rest. It's called static electricity or electrostatics. Or you can study electricity in motion called electric current in electric circuits. And this is what we're talking about today. By convention, the current is the flow of positive charge, even though in actuality, the electrons are the ones that are flowing and the electrons are negative, but that's so technical. By convention, we just talk about the flow of the positive charge because it's easier. So when there is a positive end and a negative end, we assume that the electric current is moving this way. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop any electricity related emoji in the comments. But why is electricity moving in the wire in the first place? Because there is an electric potential difference between point A and point B, creating a delta V. 
an electric potential difference or voltage. The charge is flowing and flowing and flowing. The rate by which that charge flows is called the electric current. Let me convince you. Remember that I equals Q over T. What does that mean? It means that the rate of flow of charges is the electric current magnitude. In order for water to go from uphill to downhill, there needs to be a delta H elevation difference. And in order for the electric current to move from point A to point B, there better be a potential difference. You measure this distance by a measuring tape, but you measure this difference by a voltmeter. Thank you, Alessandro Volta. This sign means an electric cell. Combine a bunch of cells together and voila, you have a battery. This is a fixed resistor. This is an ammeter, voltmeter, and a capacitor. I have talked about resistors and capacitors in another video in this physics playlist. Let's start with electric current intensity or the magnitude of the electric current measured in ampels. The magnitude of the electric current equals the quantity of charges divided by time. So one ampere equals one coulomb per second. Next, the electric potential difference, i.e. the voltage. This voltage or electric potential difference equals electric potential energy divided by the amount of charges. So it is U over Q or E over Q. E for energy or U for potential energy. No one cares. And again, this Q could be uppercase or lowercase. Again, no one gives a rip. Now, some sophisticated physicists will say the uppercase Q is for flow in fluid dynamics and the lowercase Q is the amount of charges. Next, resistance. This is resistance, this is the magnitude of the electric current, and this is voltage. The electric potential difference equals I times R. Now, before we do a bunch of practice problems, there is another video in my physics playlist titled Electric Current Voltage Power Resistance Capacitance, where we dig deeper into these topics. You can find this video in my physics playlist. And now it's time for questions. Please do not watch my videos while sleeping under the couch. Instead, sit up, get a piece of paper, and let's see how many of these problems you will answer correctly. Question number one, calculate the reading of the ameter when a charge of 30 coulombs passes through an open circuit in half a minute. Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. Now, unfortunately, some of you did this, okay? We want the reading of the ameter, so they are asking about I, and I equals Q over T, so therefore Q equals 30 coulombs, and the time is half a minute, but we have to convert that to seconds. Since one minute contains 60 seconds, half a minute contains 30 seconds. Therefore, the answer is one ampere. If you answer the question in such a manner, I am embarrassed by you. Because the circuit is open, no electric current is flowing. So the I equals zero because the circuit is open. As Dr. Thomas Sowell said, it doesn't matter how smart you are until you stop and think. Question number two, calculate the reading of the ameter when a charge of 30 coulomb passes through the closed circuit in half a minute. Okay, let's go. Now the circuit is closed, so I can use this. I can say that I equals Q over T, and we have 30 coulombs divided by half a minute, which is 30 seconds. Now this is appropriate. This is one ampere. Brilliant. Next question, please. What's the time in minutes needed to pass a charge of 25 coulombs through a copper wire if the magnitude of the current that passes through it is 5 ampere. Please pause. We know that I equals Q over T. That's true. You can rearrange the equation to say that T equals Q over I. So T equals Q over I. Cool. And what's the value of Q? What's the magnitude of the charges? 25 coulomb. And how much is the magnitude of the current? It is 5 ampels. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and time has to be in seconds. Do they want the answer in seconds? No, they want the answer in minutes. How can we convert from seconds to minutes? Well, I have time equals 5 seconds. That one minute contains 60 seconds. Now I can cancel seconds with seconds, and 5 divided by 60 equals 1 over 12, which is something akin to 0 0.083333, etc. And this is minutes. Here's the same answer in more color. Pause and review. The ammeter is connected to a closed circuit in series. 
yet it does not give a reading even though the light bulb is illuminated in the circuit. What is the cause? Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. Is it A, there is no electric current passing through the circuit? This is incorrect because the light bulb is illuminated. The circuit is opened. No, the light bulb is illuminated. The ammeter is connected in series. This is how it is supposed to be. So this is not an explanation for why not there is no reading. Next, the positive end of the ammeter is connected to the negative pole of the battery. That will do it because this is not okay. We are supposed to connect positive with positive and negative with negative. The negative end of the ammeter is connected to the negative end of the battery. This is how it's supposed to be, so this does not explain the fact. The correct answer is D. Question number five. In which one of the following circuits, the two light bulbs, number two and number three, are illuminated? However, light bulb number one is not. Please pause the video. Let's try this. Well, the circuit is open and they are connect. Okay, none of them will be illuminated, so this cannot be the answer. How about this? Well, this is a closed circuit, so one is illuminated, but two and three are off, so this is not what they wanted. They wanted the exact opposite. Let's try this. Well, the circuit is opened, all of them will be off. How about here? Oh, there is a closed circuit, so two is on, three is on, but one is off because one has an open circuit, so the correct answer here is choice A, as in Amita. Question number six, what is the work done in joules to transfer a charge of 10 coulombs across a conductor if the electric potential difference across its terminals is 24 volts? So what do we have here? We know that the quantity of charges or Q equals 10 coulombs. And we know that the voltage equals 24 volts. What do we want? We want the work done or the energy because both energy and work are measured in joules. Which equation should I use? This one. V equals E over Q. You can say it is U over Q. No one cares. Then you do cross multiplication because I want the energy or the work which equals V times Q. And what is the value of V? It's 24 volts. And what is the value of Q? It is 10 coulombs, and therefore the answer is 240 joules. Here is the same answer in full color. Pause and review. Energy and work are measured in joules. Question number seven. Calculate the quantity of electricity which passes through a conductor whose resistance is 1000 ohms for 30 minutes when the potential difference between its two ends is 220 volts. Please pause the video. What does quantity of electricity mean? It means the quantity of charges, which is measured in coulombs. So this is the unknown. What I do know is the resistance is 1000 ohms. I do know the time, which is 30 minutes, but I need to convert this to seconds. Each minute contains 60 seconds. So 30 times 60 equals 1800 seconds. I know that the potential difference or the voltage equals 220 volts. So which equation should I start with? How about Ohm's law? V equals I times R. I have the V, I have the R, I can find the I. Rearrange the equation by dividing each side of the equation by R. You get I equals V over R. V is 220 volts. R is 1000 ohms. Cancel 0 with 0. This is 22 over 100, which is 0 0.22 amperes. If I have the I and I have the T, can I find the Q? Absolutely. Q equals IT, which equals 0 0.22 multiplied by the time in seconds, which is 1800 seconds, which will give me the final answer of 396 Coulomb. And there you go. Take a moment to pause and review. Question number eight, an electric charge of six coulomb passes through an electric conductor within one minute. If the potential difference between its two terminals is 500 volts, please calculate its resistance. So what do we know? We know the quantity of charges, which is six coulomb. We know the time, which is one minute, which equals 60 seconds. We know the potential difference between the two terminals, which is 500 volts and we want the resistance. Which equation should I start with? Well, I should start with I equals Q over T. Why? Because I have the Q and I have the T, so I can find the intensity or the magnitude of the electric current. What is the quantity of charges? 6 Coulomb over time, which is 60 seconds. 6 over 60 is 1 over 10. 1 over 10 is 0 0.1 ampere. 
The second equation that I need is V equals I R. Rearrange it into R equals V over I. And what is the V? 500 volts. What is the I? We just calculated this. The magnitude of the current is 0 0.8. Anytime you divide something by 0 0.1, it's as if you're multiplying it by 10, which gives me 5,000 ohms. And this is my resistance. Take a moment to pause and review. Question 9. Which of the following diagrams represents Ohm's law? Is it this one, this one, this one, or this one? Let me know your answer in the comments. And here is question number 10. Read it and let me know your answer in the comments. You will find the answer keys in the longer video, which goes into greater detail. It's titled Electric Current Voltage Power Resistance and Capacitance, and you can find it in my physics playlist. By the way, if you want to download these notes, go to medicosisperfectgenetics.com. I have notes for physics, notes for biology, notes for general chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, you name it. Don't forget to check out my other playlists as well. If you found these videos to be helpful, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about all the drama that takes place in your kidney's proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, and more, download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. My courses come with videos, notes, and cases. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel. When you click the join button and choose the highest tier, please subscribe, hit the the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.